everybody, it's Nicholas Rogers with the Big Timber Lodge back at you for another review of a Blackout Defense rifle. So in this review today, we're going to be looking at their new option for 2023, which is the 13.9 inch. They also have it in 14 and a half and 16 cryo treated stainless steel bead blasted barrel. I'm going to compare this to my previous barrel that I had on this rifle from 2022, which was a 13.9 inch nitrite treated barrel. Wow. Both of them, fantastic. But I have to say, this cryo-treated barrel is match grade. You won't believe me when I say it, but I'm shooting sub-MOA groups with this rifle, even though it only has a 13.9-inch barrel. So let's jump right into it. So this is the quantum dual taper lock proprietary technology that Blackout Defense has developed, which has a different mounting system for the barrel to the receiver, as well as the handguard to the receiver as well. They claim it reduces unwanted barrel harmonics. Some people say that they don't believe this can be done, but like I said, this is a 13.9 inch AR-15 platform, and I'm shooting sub MOA groups with the right ammunition. Additionally, everything that you see on this rifle comes from Blackout Defense, aside from the scope, scope base, as well as the sling and the forward grip assist that I have on here. Now, some of the extra features that I had put onto the rifle from Blackout Defense is the rear mount QD detached sling point underneath the castle nut, as well as a quick detach mount, which is on this side of the rifle that I paid a little bit extra for, but very easy to install yourself on the M-Lock technology of the handguard. Everything else comes from factory. Magpulse buttstock, the Cerakote gray finish, the Blackout Defense Zero Reset Trigger, which is phenomenal as a battle rifle trigger, and then the 13.9 inch cryo treated stainless steel bead blasted barrel and i had the option of choosing and i chose the hybrid chemo adapter mount which is a mix between a flash hider and also a muzzle brake that any dead air silencer with a chemo attachment can attach to all right so enough talking about the rifle let's show where the proof is in the pudding i'm going to first start off with taking the rifle to the 25 yard range where i'm getting the trijicon rmr sighted in at 25 yards so one of the reasons why I wanted to make this build is so I could have a shorter barreled rifle. It's not an SBR because the muzzle device is pin and welded, making the full length of the barrel with the muzzle device 16 inches so it doesn't have to be registered. But I wanted to make a shorter barrel rifle that would be good for long distance engagements. That's why I bought the Night Force Attacker 1 to 8, but also be able to do close quarter battle engagements. That's why I have the 45 degree cant with the Trijicon RMR. One of the phenomenal things about this rifle is because it's only a 13.9 inch barrel, it's not front heavy, making it very easy to manipulate and rotate the rifle from looking down the scope to looking down the Trijicon RMR. Pair that with the Magpul stock, and it's fantastic. Last group, right here, 25 yards. I pulled this one left, but other than that, I feel really good about this. All right, so you saw me shooting from the bench the Trijicon RMR, and you're probably saying, well, I didn't actually see him get to use the rifle or manipulate it. Well, I can tell you just from holding it and actually using this out in the field the other day, it's very easy to have a nice cheek weld looking down the scope and to just rotate straight into that Trijicon RMR. With that being said, I am going to be taking this rifle out to the field here soon and filming some outdoor shooting on some steel, going from close quarter engagements to long range engagements and then back to the close quarter. Let's go ahead and look at some of this 100 yard footage, which is where you're actually going to see this rifle shine. This is where I shoot the sub MOA groups. With this new cryo treated barrel, with the 77 grain rounds, I shot a 1.2 MOA group, which it's still pretty darn good, but it wasn't nearly the best for the day. So as my day progressed at the range and I was shooting, I would notice on groups where I really took my time, my groups were a lot tighter. And on groups where I just kind of rushed through it, my groups really opened up. 
So I ended up calling the, the, the target back to about 50 yards during my, my time at the range just to see if maybe it was the fact that I was using an eight-time magnification scope and even with that, I noticed I shot a okay. one MOA group with 69 grain a Sierra high, Match King. Right? But and then I shot a two clear. MOA group with the 69 grain Sierra Match King. And I'm going, what's going on? Right? What's going on? So I ended up deciding to do some dry firing with the rifle. And I noticed because it has a 4.5 pound trigger, zero creep, and zero pre travel. Next up, and I'm not used to that heavy of a trigger. When I was dry firing, I was noticing I was seizing up my finger and actually kind of pulling the trigger, not straight back. And I was noticing little micro flinches in the scope. So I said to myself, you know what you need to do is you need to slow down, not focus on the trigger pull, but just focus and ensure that you're keeping that crosshair directly over the center of the target and just let that come back naturally is slow and just let it take its time and let it be a surprise. Now, this is no news to any shooter that's been around for a while, but when you've gotten used to shooting match weight triggers, it can actually throw you off when the trigger's a little bit heavy, especially when you're shooting for accuracy. So once I started doing that, and I switched over to that 69 grain Gorilla with the Sierra Match Kings, I shot a .9 MOA group. Point nine. And I'm going, okay. Was this just a fluke? I think that's a pretty good group. It definitely shot or, higher than the Sierra. Can I do it again? And guess what? I shot a point eight four MOA group at a hundred yards with a thirteen point nine inch barreled rifle. Sixty nine grains. You're a match king. Grains loaded grains. up in gorilla ammunition. And I couldn't be happier. So I feel like oh, I need my. to talk about this. So let's back out of the range. So yeah, 13.9 inch barrel with an eight time magnification scope and I'm shooting a .84 MOA group. It's been a learning process for me. Now, I hope that you've watched all my videos and learned some things that you don't have to replicate and shoot hundreds, if not a thousand rounds of ammo just to figure out your rifle. Now, that's not to say there's nothing wrong with practicing. I absolutely love it, especially when it's as big of a joy to shoot as this AR-15 is. It cycles phenomenally. I've had one malfunction out of a thousand rounds, and that was probably due to the ammo. I had a short stroke. If you don't know what a short stroke is, it just means the bolt didn't cycle back far enough in order to cycle in the next round or to stay locked in place when the magazine is empty. The ammo was kind of cheap fiochi and who knows, it probably was just underloaded. But I haven't had any other issues with this rifle, no matter what kind of ammunition I put in it. Now, I will say to my viewers, if you are looking for a rifle that you can sit at the bench and not run any tactical drills with and shoot the tightest groups possible at three, four, five, six hundred yards. You're probably thinking this isn't the rifle for me. Well, maybe not the 13.9, maybe get the 16 inch barrel. And once you get that 16 inch barrel AR-15 platform, that's when you swap out the zero reset trigger that comes from factory with whatever match weight trigger that you would like to put in. But please, before you swap out that trigger, give this one a shot. I, I can't describe how amazing this trigger actually feels. And now that I'm actually learning what it takes to shoot this accurately off a bench, I can't believe the performance I'm getting out of this barrel. You've got to try it yourself. I know I keep saying that, but it's fantastic. Fantastic. And I even called Tom today with Blackout Defense, and I said, man, you know, I, I can be brutally honest in my reviews. I said, but I can also be brutally honest about myself. And I'll admit when I mess up, I admitted to my viewers and to Tom, yeah, I put a screw up underneath the, the, the forward grip assist, and it was pressing into the gas block. 
I didn't realize it until I watched the video, then I noticed it, all right? I also told Tom, too, because he wanted to know how my rifle was shooting for me since he sent it back with the new barrel. And I could have told Tom, hey, man, you finally got me a rifle that shot nice. You got me a barrel that works it's so much better than the last piece of crap. But that wasn't the truth. The truth was a combination of things. One, screw in a gas block, not free floating barrel. And two, because this is a battle trigger and I was used to a match weight trigger, I wasn't having a nice, smooth, soft pullback when I'm shooting off the bench. But that doesn't mean I'm always going to have to do that. That's not why I bought this rifle. I bought this rifle to be able to have an engagement, right? Not just sit on the bench and have it look pretty and punch holes in paper. This is my if the shit hits the fan rifle. I'm going to go to my gun safe. And I'm going to grab this and the ammunition and the handgun. If I can only have two guns, it's going to be this and a handgun. And I'm taking my family and we are getting the F out of Dodge. And now that I have proven this rifle to myself and the hardware and equipment that are on the rifle, I feel very comfortable with the selection that I've made. And honestly, for the price point of the Blackout Defense AR, considering that you're paying sub $2,500 and you're getting a premium product and the customer service is fantastic, I highly recommend that you check them out. And if you don't want to just take my word for it, there are many other YouTube reviewers that have reviewed this rifle and they will say the same thing. I haven't seen many of them show the accuracy results. I've seen some, and a lot of my viewers have commented, I get sub MOA groups with my rifle. And now I can say, I get sub MOA groups with my rifle. I want you to seriously take time, look around the internet, and see what other rifle manufacturers making a barrel that's sub 14 inches and you're able to get sub MOA groups. Now I have a target from Tom that he sent me when they dialed in my rifle for me and tested it. And it shot right over a half MOA group, but that was being shot off a machine. And as a human, with human error, I was able to shoot 0.8 MOA, which is amazing. So until next time, Peace.